We're back here again with yet another review and today we're going to be taking a look at two deluxe masterverse figures i don't remember the last time i took a look at a masterverse figure was it beast man it's probably beast man in that group of figures but anyway we're going to be taking a look at the brand new mattel masterverse masters of the universe princess of power hordak and she-ra she-ra is a character that i have wanted for so long on the shelf and if you guys go back and watch my video i said that i wanted them to make a she-ra and they did. They delivered. And she looks fucking awesome. So I'm very happy about that. She's going on my main figure display. I don't have enough females on the on the shelf. And she's one that I definitely feel like needs to be on there. And Hordak is a great addition to the collection as well. Um, I would love the Horde Troopers. That would be super cool to get, like, army builders of them. I'm really surprised that this series has not done a single army builder yet. A little weird. But uh, taking a look at the packaging here, they're pretty standard. Except, obviously, now, instead of New Eternia or Revelation series, we get Princess of Power, which I'm so fucking happy that we're getting this series at all. On her side, you get to see that's a Shira, and you get this awesome ass artwork on the back. Look at how fucking sick that is. I heard some people saying that they wouldn't want this Pegasus. What is wrong with you fucking people? I would love to see this Pegasus made into an action figure. I don't think it's going to, just solely for the fact of Battle Cat did not sell well, and we have not seen a ride since for this line. Which really sucks, because I really want a Panthor. Um, but I don't want to have to customize it, because that would be a pain in the dick. But I would really like the Pegasus, so go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead um, or read the read-up if you want. And then on the back, you do get to see some other upcoming figures. Catra and Zodak are definitely on my list. Do I know anything about either one of them? No. Not really. But do I want them because they're new characters for the Masterverse series? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take them. If you're talking about barcodes, here is Shira's, and then on the side you get this awesome ass artwork of Shira again. I would love that on a poster. That looks sick. And then as far as Hordak goes, you get this awesome ass artwork on the back. Are we getting Mantena in Leech? Oh, that'd be so sick. Can Leech have the fucking suction cup hands? But for the Masterverse, that would be so cool. I know they just did him for the basic figure line, but I would really, really like to see him made for the masterverse that would be so so cool to see uh as far as a read up for hordak there you go you have to see the same figures on there my box was completely destroyed when i found it so and what are you going to do barcode on the bottom there if you're looking for him and then an awesome artwork the artwork for this line is fucking phenomenal um i will say i do wish that we got an accessory like this like a you know kind of like a emperor palpatine type john but unfortunately we did not get that but Anyway, I'm extremely excited to open these guys, especially She-Ra. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do just that. So getting these two out of the package, there's a lot of awesomeness going on with these. I really like a lot of stuff they got. Um, sh they're both kind of reuse. I mean, definitely parts here and there, but there's a lot new here to justify buying them for the higher prices. So I'm going to go ahead and show you why I think that they're worth it. And if you want to grab these, why you should and or shouldn't. So without further ado, let's start with my least favorite of the two, Hordak. Now, don't get me wrong. This Hordak is pretty damn awesome. He's got a lot of accessories, and the colors are really nice, and I like the character, and his design is just really good, and I think it transferred really good into a Masterverse figure. So, taking a look, you get the bone cavern thing that he puts his head in, and then you get, like, this weird twir swirly-twirly plastic kind of thing that they kind of use for, like, for their dinosaurs, but it looks like marble for his face, and that looks awesome. The sculpt is so well done. Just super well designed. Um, you get his mechanical arm, which you can exchange, which we'll talk about later in accessories. I'm going to do each of their accessories on their own. Um, you know, separate them so we don't get confused on who's who. But he does come with an interchangeable arm. But taking a look at this one, you get the rivets all over it. But it doesn't skimp on the articulation, so that's pretty damn cool. Even though the top joint is kind of stiff. It really doesn't add much more, but, you know, just 
thought you should know. Um, I really like the silver paint that they use. It's bright and um, silvery, I guess, for lack of better terms. Looks really good. I like that the bones are all painted all the way around. You get this cool ass rib cage thing that you can take off. I'm not going to because usually when you take them off, they don't get back on the way that you want them to. The red on here looks really good. And then on his other arm, he's got all these bands and stuff. Um, all separate pieces, I believe, because these arms are reuse, at least this arm and then the other arm that you'll see he comes with are reuse. Um, which doesn't bother me because they're mostly hidden anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, the loincloth is definitely reuse as well, but they gave a different belt. They usually change out the belts. The legs seem to be reuse as well. I do like the, sh the shade of blue that they chose. Um, however, I do like the way that that looks. But obviously then the boots and the feet are new too. You get these weird ass webbed, not webbed toes uh, with the bright silver all along it as well, which I do really, really like that. And then obviously you get his cloth cape. Now, the material doesn't feel cheap, but it looks cheap. It's a little stretchy, but you can see right through it. I mean, that, 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 that there's no hiding that. To me, it's not that big a deal. I'd rather have a cloth cape than not, but I think another layer would be nice. I'm not, I'm not even asking for a wire. I do wish that they just used the, the one that came on King Greystall because that was wired. And... It was tattered and it was red, so I don't know why they just didn't do that. I might get a second King Grayskull if he ever goes on, like, super clearance to switch out the capes there. But, you know, you never know. As far as accessories go, I'm going to do them each individually, net, like, as I show the figure, because there is a lot for each of them. Um, he is a little bit more, though. So, first of all, you're going to get a couple different hands, starting with um, a grip hand for the left side and then a trigger finger hand for the right side. Um, then you're going to get this thing, which is like a clamp hand. So I think that goes on here, which is pretty cool. So you can plug that into there. I don't know why he would need this if he has regular hands that he can use. I don't know. Kind of stupid. But if you don't want to plug that in there, how about an effect piece? You do get this big old red effect piece. That's awesome. We need more effect pieces. That's pretty damn cool. He could... Pew, pew, pew. And it holds not very well. You have to find, like, the notches. But it does hold pretty good, actually. So, I like that. It's translucent. Oh, man, that's really, really cool. And then you do get the bow. Like, the crossbow with the dragon on there with some translucent red on there. The energy looks really, really nice. So, there's... Ooh, I just knocked it right off. But there's that. You kind of have them locked up with, with no gun. Rather, a... Uh, crossbow so i do like that then you plug this arm out go ahead plug in this normal arm in and there you go then it just looks exactly like the other one which honestly i don't know usually i like the basic looks for things but i think i'm gonna go ahead and leave the awesome arm in and then finally you do get a shield which usually i like to take the hands off and then plug them in but just for the sake of time we'll go ahead and just maybe not but anyway there's a shield no real paint on it but it does have like a vibrant um red look metallic-y does look really really nice so very happy about this these are these are great span of accessories as far as articulation goes it's not going to be anything super surprising the head's not really going to move up and down um it's basically just going to rotate i mean the, they don't really look up and down on this buck anyway but especially not with this thing. So the shoulders, whether it's the mechanical arm or this one, are going to go up that far, down, rotate 360, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. But sometimes one of the joints are usually kind of stuck, but that's fine. And then the wrist swivel and hinge. So I like that. The torso doesn't really do much. Um, kind of just pit rocks back and forth. And then you do get a waist swivel. Crunching and arcing isn't too much neither. Um, hips will do almost full splits. They'll go down, he'll kick forward that far, back, upper thigh cut, double jointed knees that work a little bit better than the elbows, boot swivel, and then the ankle goes pivoting, and it'll go down and up. So good range on pretty much everything other than the torso. I've always been saying since the beginning of this line that I really wish that they would improve upon the torsos. But I don't think that that's going to happen anytime soon. So overall, I think that he turned out pretty damn good. Now, as far as the one I like better, it's no question that it's She-Ra. Just because I've always wanted a Princess of Power figure. I mean, it's just cool. I didn't even really watch the cartoon, but I just, I've always liked her design. And I like what, you know, she represents in terms of, like, you know, 
little girls having a good superhero role model to look up to. Um, and from what I do know about her, she's kind of a badass, so I really do like this. The head sculpt is gorgeous. Oh, it looks so good. Really, really good head sculpt. The hair looks nice. It's got a nice wash in it. It is a little hard, unfortunately, so that kind of doesn't help with articulation, but I like the headdress. I like the eyes. Um, looks really nice. You do get her skirt thing, which it's softer down here, and then, you know, obviously regularly hard, I guess, up here. I like the little gold accents all over it. And then what's really cool is they, like, printed on, like, gold, like, trim onto the parts. I didn't even notice that until I started recording, but that is really cool. They have that on both sides. I like the sculpt in there, too. The little blue is nice. Her legs look good. I'm pretty sure they're reuse from Evelyn, maybe? I don't know. I feel like they're reused, but maybe they're not. Now that I think about it. I don't know. And then the same thing with the tampo on the boots. I didn't notice that until like I got a closer, closer look. So that's really, really cool. I like the choice of gold that they chose. It's not super bright, but it's also not like dull plastic. So I think that that works. Um, and then obviously she has the same issue with the cape. This is her little cape. You can exchange it for a big boy cape or big girl cape. But uh, I like the shorter cape for her a little bit better. So she also does come with a bunch of accessories as well. So first off, like I mentioned, you do get the longer cape. So all you'll have to do, I'll showcase two accessories at once. You'll pop the head off. Just be careful with that. Um, and then this is just like a little ring. You take that off. And then this is like her ultimate form, I guess. I don't really know that the lore that well. You pop on the long cape, pop on the interchangeable head that has the mask on. And then there you go. So you can have the longer cape, which I do like. Um, I think I like the shorter cape better, so that's what I'm going to leave on there. And then you do get her alternate head where she has this new mask on, so it's got a little bit of white on there. It seems like a closed version of this mask. Um, I, again, I definitely prefer this head, but this is also a very nice head sculpt. Um, she also does come with a grip hand for the left side and a fist for the right, so that looks cool. Probably going to put the fist on her, but... It doesn't really matter because she does come with her power sword. I do like that. The paint on this side is really effed. Uh, the gem isn't super nice in there. I think it's molded in the translucent blue and then it was painted silver. Um, but whatever, I don't really like that. And then I don't know how they did the shield. I think it's molded in light blue and then they did like a silver iridescent dry brush over and it's awesome. So that just slips into her hand a lot easier than Hordax. Um, so I like that there. And then obviously you can get her to hold her sword. Um, and then there you go. Look at that. I mean, I don't like the mask and the cape as much, but that shield looks awesome. So I'm really happy with this band of accessories here. In terms of articulation, the head isn't really going to do much. She's not going to be able to look up very far. Down, not it, she can look down pretty good and then rotate and pivot side to side. It's not terrible range. It's just I wish she could look back more because sometimes her hair pushes her forward and I want her like standing up straight. You know, it's it's kind of a weird thing. It's a little irksome, but it's not terrible. Um, the shoulders go all the way up past T pose. Rotate 360 bicep swivel, double jointed pinless elbows. Might I mention that Hordak is also completely pinless. And then the wrist swivel and hinge. The door, the torso joint goes back. Whoa, her head was on all the way. There you go. The torso goes back and forth pretty good. I like that. It doesn't really rotate, but it does pivot. Um, and then you do get a waist swivel under the dress, which is nice. She could do pretty much the full splits. Yeah, definitely full splits. So kick down, kick forward, back, upper thigh cut double jointed pinless knee with a boot rotation the ankle going down up and pivot and the ang the angle on the pivot the angle on the ankle pivot is also not bad so i do like that as well so yeah i think the articulation definitely is enough for her i just the torso kicking forward really does bother me a little bit but not the end of the world in terms of scale, you know we got to get them with the Zack Toys team. Here they are next to the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Dark Knight Returns Batman and the NECA uh, Poster Kong, or Silly Kong as I like to call him. Here they are next to the Marvel Legends Darwin and Zombie Captain America. Obviously, they're 7-inch scale, so the Marvel Legends are a little bit smaller. And then here they are next to the Fortnite Jazzwares series Peely. So they're shorter than Peely, which is funny. But I think what people want to see them next to the most is the Masterverse main man himself, 
He-Man. Um, and I like the way that they look together. Kind of wish that they would come back and do another classic He-Man. I know they're doing that vintage figure, but I gotta see that one in person. Because I want a good head sculpt for He-Man. Come back and do a realistic version of He-Man. I just don't like that head for him. And the skin tone's a little weird. Just, I don't know. The, the, this line has been steadily improving since the beginning um which makes me happy but it's still crazy to see that he-man and skeletor are still on the shelves Whew, they really saturate oversaturated the market with those ones but i mean they look good together so while it's no surprise because if you know me you know that i love this line but i'm very happy with these figures she-ra is so damn cool and i'm so happy to have her uh hordak is a great addition to the collection too um he's one of the few characters that aren't mainstream that i am super familiar with i really like his origin story and all that good stuff he's a really cool character so i'm happy to get him into the line here um i just am overall super happy with these figures in general uh this line is awesome, and I hope that they keep going. I like that they're making characters that I don't know. Um, I'm, I know it's, like, stupid to say, but I, I like getting characters that I don't know with this line. It's it's super fun. But I do want, like, all the weird, stupid characters. Um, like, seeing Leech and um, Mantena on the back of the packaging really has uh, high hopes. And my head puts high hopes there, because I really do want both of those figures in the line. Uh, Snout Trout's a big one for me. I would love Snout Trout in the line. Um... The Sorceress I know is coming, which I do like. I think Buzz Off is coming. Uh, I like the Two-Headed Double Trouble, I think his name is. Um, no, Too Bad, Too Bad. Oh, man, so awesome. So, whatever. Uh, I love this line. So, not very unsatisfied with these guys, as you probably could guess. But, anyway, I believe that's all I got for today. So, at a price point of about $30 a piece... I think that that's totally fair. So, I'm going to go ahead and give them each a 10 out of 10. For me... I like them. There's not much I would change on them, or at least nothing reasonable. So, I believe that's all I got. So, if you have not already, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I have a lot of fun over there. I post a lot of fun stuff, so I'm sure you all will too. But as always, let me know. You copping? Either one of them? Just one? Hordak? Shira? Let me know. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.